well, that countdown went a bit bit less <laughs> like what we uh, were expecting. But welcome to episode four of Talk It Up Tuesday with Susie or with Team Brandstatter. And Team Brandstatter are the four lovely ladies that you can see on your screen. From the top, we've got Team Leader, Susie Brandstatter. We've got Tina Meyer, Susan Jones and myself, Tia Veach. All right, we would like to acknowledge the Tharawal people, the traditional custodians of the land on which we are broadcasting today. We pay our respects to the elders, past, present and emerging, and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples who may be listening. And here's our team leader, Susie Brandstatter, talking about our three levels of government. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Susan. Um, I was thinking that we are in preparation for this. A lot of people get very confused about what, which government authority does what. I was watching the the broad, the eleven o'clock, you know, eleven o'clock with Gladys broadcast, and the questions that were being asked. So many of them were not questions that she should, they should be asking of somebody from the state. It should be a federal, they're usually federal type questions. And I thought people probably just don't realise that. So, put my old school teacher hat on and just thought I'd just go through a few things about the levels of government and how they affect you in, in your everyday life. So we have, as we all know. That's obvious. We have three levels of government. We have federal, and our federal member is Angus Taylor, MP, and he's from the Liberal National Party, or the co coalition as it's often shortened to. We have state government, and our state member is Nathaniel Smith, who's also a Liberal National Party member. And then for local government, we have eight councillors, and we have a mayor who is Robert Kahn, and he's an independent. So the federal government. It's also known as the Commonwealth Government and it's responsible for the conduct of all national affairs and its areas of responsibility are very clearly set out in the Australian Constitution and they include defence and foreign affairs, trade, commerce, currency, immigration, postal services, telecommunications, broadcasting, air travel and most social services and pensions. And it's also involves uh, mainly through the funding process in many things carried out by the state, such as health, education, environmental issues and industrial relations. Now, our state or territory governments, they under the Australian Constitution, the states are responsible for everything that's not listed as a federal responsibility. However, there's in lots of them, both both levels can be involved. So some of the things that they do are our schools and hospitals, conservation, environment, roads, railway and public transport, public works, agriculture and fishing, industrial relations, community services, sport and recreation, community consumer affairs, police prisons and emergency services. So it's pretty big what they, they actually cover. And of course, then they hive off a whole, a whole lot of responsibilities to the local government. And the power of local governments are controlled by the acts of state parliament, such as the Local Government Act, and we have our own local government minister as well. And so the council is answerable to local government. And things that local councils are concerned with are matters that are much closer to our home, such as building regulations and development, public health, local roads and footpaths, parks, playing fields, libraries, local environment issues, waste disposal, and lots of community services. So when I was thinking about it, a lot of people think, well, I don't have anything to do with any form of government. It doesn't affect me in my daily life in any way whatsoever. So I thought, thought about it my day and I thought, you know, what happens, what levels of government affect me in my daily life? Thing, first thing, getting up and having a shower. Well, that's the, bat, the gas, the power, electricity, water. Well, that's all state government. They're in, they're, they're, they're in charge of that. When I have my breakfast, if I'm eating some sort of imported cereal, uh, it's going to be the federal government have already got their finger in the pie there because they're saying what can and can't be imported. And then if you've had a really great advertisement on TV, that's also under federal government. Where the state government comes in, it's all the consumer laws and shop and workplace laws. And like if the cereal um, sort of says that it's going to give you giant muscles overnight and it doesn't, that's a consumer law. So you're going to go to a state government about that. Health and, and then, of course, local government. If I go to a restaurant and there's cockroaches running around, that's when I get involved, involved with um, some of the local government. When I travel to work, if I'm going on a national, a big road, that's national funding. 
if um, I'm driving down the freeway, that's going to be get going to state government things. And also buses or trains and all the traffic laws and police and traffic lights and major roads and road taxes. But if I've got a pothole or I hit a pothole on my local road, that is our local government. That's when you put in a complaint through the portal, street signs, bus stops. And, of course, one of the big bugbears is state government very clear, cleverly dumped um, our state one of our state roads onto the local government. They gave them some money and said, oh, you can look after this. I know now the local council are doing everything they can to try and get out of that because it's like this big sponge soaking up all of our funding. But that's and that's something I'll be advocating to, for to give it back. Anyway, um, if you're a student, it's all about higher ed, are they, the federal government does, funds the state, so it gives states money and it's also in charge of higher education. Educate in state, we've got the education department. And this is where you know you see people getting up on Facebook saying, Oh, it's all the council's fault. We need a second high school in the Wallandilly when and you know the council should be building one. That is not the council's responsibility. It's it's a state government. But as a councillor, it's something that we can be lobbying the state government to put another school into the Wallandilly because you know it's ridiculous that the Wallandilly only has one public school. So that's something that can certainly be um, looking at. And libraries, obviously, our council is in charge of our library and it gets funding from the state government to run it because it wouldn't be able to afford to do it just on ratepayer money. Sporting, it's all those local sports fields, like the local pony club ground, all of those sort of things. And that's all local government. It, it's the really big ones that are state and federal. You're ringing somebody, don't don't complain to the state government if your telephone's not working because it's actually the telephone is looked after by federal government and TV, which I've already talked about, broadcasting laws, and, and the ABC, it's all federal. Doctors, um, state, other hospitals, the local government handles things like community services, meals on wheels and all that sort of thing. So, again, that's something that as a councillor I'll be advocating that we... Um, to the state government to look at a hospital in the Wallandilly because it is disgusting that the Wallandilly, with all its population it has now and the increase planned by the state government, that we um, don't have a hospital. We've got plenty of medical centres and all that other sort of thing. Um, planning laws and, of course, local building controls. And that's something, a big thing I've actually been working with the council with for the last few years. The council can put controls in and that's... They can, they're called the DCP, and they can do all that, and that then gives some control over what a developer's allowed to put in. But the council doesn't make the decision these days about whether a DA passes. That goes to the local planning power that has one community representative on it and all the rest are not. And so that's people complained about the council not, um, or the council planning approving things it wasn't the council it was a local planning power which is panel which actually is a state government organization garbage well we all know garbage collection is a is a, a local council job a big one so as a councillor there are things that i can do i can advocate on your behalf i can be part of the planning process as our community grows and I can work in a team making informed decisions with thorough preparation of facts and ensure the transparency of those decisions. These are things that I can do, plus a few others. So thank you for listening this week. Um, I can take my teacher hat off. Um, next week I'm going to be talking about the DCP, which are the planning controls for flats. That's up for consultation because I'll actually be um, speaking at the community forum on Tuesday, that Tuesday night. And the big thing area I'm focusing is on the downgrading of the adaptable unit requirements because I'm not very happy with it. I think it's disgusting that they are, have gone from a 30% adaptable down to 10%. I don't think it's acceptable. So that is something that I will be working on. So thank you for listening, everybody. I um, hope that sort of cleared a few things up and uh, hope look, look very much forward to talking to you all next week. Thank you, Susie. That Thank was you. actually a lot of information and a lot of um, uh, things for everyone to think about because I know it's made me just even think about my everyday, like just how much all the different levels of count, of government affect everything I do during my, my normal 
uh, day. So thank you for clearing that up. And I know that sort of a lot of that information is available on the council website. So it's uh, it, it it's not a secret. It, it's out there for everybody and everyone has access to that information. But it was really good to hear it um, in that, that form so that, uh, you know, just bringing it down to, to, to the everyday level for us. Thank you. Hey, well, thank you. See everybody next week. Bye. Bye.